Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we are looking at some new contracts we have available to us. The Lunar Flyby, Lunar Orbiter, and Lunar Impact contracts are now available to us. So with the exact same satellite we were using to get the Malneo orbits and I was thinking about the Tundra orbit as well, but high orbits and I noticed in previous episodes or the previous episode that this satellite was capable of leaving Earth's sphere of influence alone. So it is more than capable of completing most, probably all three of these contracts. Not the orbit quite yet because of the engine used, but um, after these missions were launched, we actually got a new engine. Um, we're not going to see it this episode. We'll see it next episode, a 0.4 kilonewton thruster, which is able to relight itself. Uh, we're able to get into lunar orbit with that engine, but with the current setup on SphereSat, it's an AJ-10 to kick our apogee like halfway to the moon, and then the Araby engine to actually complete um, the trajectory, which isn't using all the fuel for the finishing, um, like one kilometer per second delta V burn. Um, but you know, it works. Coming up on booster separation, you'll notice at the top of the screen, we have a new UI for our launches. And that's just something I threw together just to see what it would look like. I think I like it if um, I may make some changes to it, but I think we'll see this in all of the um, episodes in the future. These lunar contracts are giving a large amount of money, almost a quarter of a million, if not more funds per successful contract. And just like previously in this series, um, I'm gonna try to do these for as long as they'll give me the contracts. Um, because I think this is a very, very good way of getting our facilities upgraded for getting a lot of funds um, for safety reasons, but also for unlocking parts reasons. We should, if we can continue to just do this, uh, sending sphere sets for lunar flybys, contracts, orbits around the moon as much as possible, we can get a large amount of funds saved up and we can get our space program up and running pretty much because as it stands right now, this rocket still takes untooled, um, mind you, I haven't tooled this rocket yet and honestly I don't know why because I've used it so many times and I should probably tool it because I believe it takes build times down as well. But as I was saying, this rocket, the L41 with SphereSat Mark 1, takes about 200 days to construct and roll out. And I'd really, really like that diminished. We want to make those build times very, very low so that we can uh, do missions that don't take almost a year apart from one another. Here you'll see our Apogee kick, and then, well no, this isn't the Apogee kick. This is after the Apogee kick. This is the translunar injection. And for some reason on this first iteration, the center of mass was a bit off. So you can see the RCS really fighting with that Araby engine, um, which I presume is the reason why we fell short of meeting the contract. I believe we had to be as close as 5,000 kilometers to the moon or surface. And this was nowhere near that, so we did technically fly through the moon's sphere of influence, mechanics-wise, but it wasn't close enough to complete the contract. Even though we weren't close enough to complete the contract, as I said, we did pass through the sphere of influence of the moon and we had some science experiments, which was the reason the center of mass was a little offset the way I set it up. So we were able to unlock a few nodes, two of them. One of them had the um, thrusters, which were able to be relit. And the other one had a bunch of upgrades to pre-existing engines. Now, none of these will be implemented in this episode, but next episode, they should definitely be implemented. Now, as I was mentioning about these contracts, they're getting us a lot of funds. And one of them, the Lunar Impact contract, actually gives you 15 science to complete it. At least this was done two times as per the recording of this voiceover. 
It gave you 15 science as well as that same insane amount of funds. And if that lunar contract mission stays up for a while, if I can do it um, at least a few more times, that gives us a lot of science to unlock nodes without having to do more research, technically. And if it's anything like um, the contracts in the past, which I thought I could do for a long time, it'll give me, I think, three or four before it won't give me that contract anymore. And I did take a look. Um, it is keeping count of how many times I complete it. So I assume there is a limit to these, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all of them that we possibly can because these rockets untooled, which again, I don't know why I don't have them tooled, are less than 20,000 funds to construct. Tooled, I think it's somewhere, somewhere around seven to 8,000 funds. So, you know, it seems like a no brainer considering how many launches that this, that has happened with this rocket. Now, some science nodes we're going to be looking at unlocking as soon as we can are either some RTGs or some much, much better solar panels because the solar panels we have right now are really, really lackluster. They leave a lot to be desired. They, the way I have it set up right now, if you don't have a lot of electronic charge, electronic, electric charge on the craft itself, it will drain very very quickly and this is with the least amount of electric drain i can have right now i don't have an avionics core on this vessel at all it's just the sputnik i guess it's still an avionics core it just is very very it just requires a lot less electric charge than the other avionics probes um the only downside being you can't manually control it However, there are some ways of getting around this, such as using KOS. Um, sometimes MacJeb likes to work, but I don't use it. Um, and also, if you set the RCS ports um, to the translation controls and don't have it actually translate, you can use the translation controls to change attitude, which is a little bit sort of cheaty, I feel, but I've done it, I've done it a few times so far with the Sphere Sad, not gonna lie. Um, but even with the very, very low electric charge drain, it runs out of electricity very quickly. Unless you have more electric charge on board, it'll run out of electricity in about four to five days, maybe even less, depending on how, um, if you keep it in sunlight long enough for the solar panels to do the little bit they can. And Sometimes, especially with um, trajectories that don't just fly past the moon and sort of get caught by the moon is the best way I can put it, you can run out of electric charge before you reach your, your mark and some of these contracts require you to have electric charge on board when, um, when you reach the moon. Also, I'm pretty sure I completely neglected to mention it as it was happening, but on this launch, um, one of the, I think they're already 89s, one of the booster stages, Engine 3, had a performance loss immediately and only burned through like half of its fuel by the time we had to decouple, which led to the fuel tank blowing up and honestly i'm surprised the main engine the main fuel tank didn't explode with it but we were able to use that very launch to successfully fly by the moon Our next objective was to complete, now that we have uh, completed the lunar flyby contract, was to complete the lunar impact contract. I'd like to do at least one of these, um, one of each of them, before I pretty much just keep doing impacts until they don't give the contract to me anymore. So impact is next on the list, and so far this launch has gone nominally. The method I used in flight planning to get as close as possible to the moon was first aiming for an impact and then just simply getting as close as possible. Now, obviously this one we are actually aiming for an impact, um, so we'll try to cut the throttle and get it as close as we can to the prediction that Principia gives us. I have been having a little bit of issues with that. Um, it gives you a start burn time and a cutoff time, and if you use that directly, I'm not sure if it's um, 
keeps in mind that there's like sort of a spool up of that the engines do, like a maybe half a second to a second where you don't have full thrust right away. And if I s put the throttle to full at the start time and cut it at the end time, it goes a little bit off. And I've been trying to counter this by like half a second here or there, and it's still just a little bit off, so it's not perfect. There's always gonna be course corrections, and that's just something that I've been keeping in mind from here on out. So we've got a lunar flyby and a lunar impact complete. Next episode, we will be looking at orbiting the moon and probably impacting it a bunch. I may, depending on how much footage I can get from here till the next episode is released, just do a bunch of impacts and not have it in the episode and possibly work on a rudimentary lunar lander. I think we could possibly pull that off. Given how much science and funds we'll get from these impact missions, we'll see what happens. Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.